In today's video, Bitcoin grabs top 3 NFT all-time sales record, plus Certic, an audit company, identifies an exploit on Kraken, takes 3 million from Kraken, puts them in their own wallet, sends a part of that to Tunado Cash, and still tells Kraken, we are white hat hackers, we are gonna send back those funds, but you are threatening our employees. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, guys, yes, of course, always run BTC. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about five amazing Bitcoin jars. I'm going to give you a crypto tip. I'm going to talk about the news, of course, answer a question of one of the followers, and end the video always with a beautiful, inspirational story or quote. Now, let's quickly jump into the news first, because it's huge news. And after that, we will look into the jars to see if that news is influencing the charts. The Bitcoin network, guys, has climbed to the top three when it comes to NFT sales. Yes, it was just surpassing Ronin with 4.28 billion US dollar worth of sales. So it's now on the third place after Ethereum and Solana. Bitcoin is doing great when it comes to NFTs as well. Bitcoin will also be the king when it comes to NFTs and all other possibilities on blockchains. Bitcoin at the end will be the king. It's simple as that, guys. Now, in the last 30, days when we zoom a little bit in bitcoin is even outperforming solana bitcoin did 148 million dollar worth of nft sales ethereum did 157 million dollar of nft sales and solana only did 77 million dollar worth of nft sales so bitcoin already surpassed ronin and is now slowly surpassing solana to become probably the second biggest nft sale blockchain but the end goal is becoming number one. So yes, there will be a moment that the Bitcoin NFT sales on that Bitcoin blockchain will be surpassing all the NFT sales also on Ethereum, guys. That is why I would always bet on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is king. Now, the second news item is kind of funny item because it's about Kraken, one of the best exchanges and the oldest exchanges out there, and Certic, one of the best audit companies out there. So if a new platform starts a new project, like a new blockchain or, for example, a new project on a blockchain, they need their project to be audited. That audit often happens to Certic in this industry. Of course, there was a lot of rumors about Certic already not being the best audit company, but now it even got worse. As far as I understood, they found an exploit in Kraken. They took more than $3 million out of the core wallets of Kraken. So those 3 million they took and they put in their own account of Certic. And then from there, they even moved certain funds to Tornado Cash to make them disappear. Now. You might say, hey, that is like stealing. But Certic says, no, nah, it's not stealing. We are white hackers. We just showed Kraken this is the exploit. And we asked him, yes, you need to pay something for that white hack because else we will not return your funds. Of course, a normal white hacker would only like take like $3 or $5 just to show he was right and then claim the like bonus for finding this beautiful exploit in Kraken. But they took $3 million. So that's a little bit too much, I think, Certic, to take like $3 million from Kraken. is like, that's not white hacking anymore. That's just hacking and stealing and if you would have just returned those three millions after a show and crack and the exploit then it would all be okay but now you're even sending funds to Tornado Cash. And I know guys that you're sending those funds to Tornado Cash because you say that the Kraken team is threatening the Certic team and that is how you want to make those funds disappear so there is no centralized uh, government or whatever there will be to take those funds back from you. But that's like a really, really weird thing to do. Of course, you will still have the funds in your own control because you know, Donata Cash will wash those funds into new wallets that nobody knows. But um, still, it's like an awkward thing to do for a white hacker. You could easily keep those funds in the wallet and send them back to Kraken and just wait for the bonus that Kraken pays you for finding those exploits. Just imagine you being certain. Ah, we found an exploit in Kraken. Yeah, let's take like 3 million. Now maybe let's take 4 million or let's take like 7 million worth of tokens, whatever it is. Let's just take all of the tokens that are in the wallet just to show them that we found an exploit. Like that's not normal. Normally you take like $5 or $10 and maybe 
$10,000 just to show them, hey, we found a leak in your system. Um, are you prepared to fix that leak? This is the bill. Then we will tell you what the leak exactly is. But you're not going to uh, like take like three of million or like seven million or whatever it is from that exchange and put it in the account to send it to Tornado Cash to make it disappear for the government. That doesn't really sound like white hacking. But it is a beautiful plot maybe for a new movie. Uh, yeah, I would love to see a movie about that, like an audit company, white hacking an exchange, but not really white hacking that exchange, because when it white hacked that exchange, it did as a black hat hacker to take those funds <laughs> into a new account and send those funds from that new account again into Tornado Cash to make them disappear for the governments to protect that exchange that they found the exploit of. Something like that. That's a real good plot in a movie, guys, <laughs> but not really something that I would believe at the moment. It's a very strange situation. Let's see how this will play out. That's the news for today, guys. So on the one hand, Bitcoin is doing amazing. Bitcoin is making new records when it comes to NFT sales. And on the other hand, uh, trusted companies like Certic uh, are hacking now trusted exchanges to be able to extort them from uh, through more than 3 million US dollars by sending a part of those funds already to Tonado Cash to make them disappear for the government. What more do you want? Is this not the perfect drama industry that we are living in? This is the beautiful industry of Bitcoin and blockchain, guys. There is always drama, but you need to stay focused on one main thing. And that thing is Bitcoin, Bitcoin the king. The first chart of today, guys, is this one hour chart, that the chart that we left yesterday. Uh, there was a buy signal. We could have taken the buy signal over there, guys, when the candle were closing above the yellow stepping line. There was also green at that moment. The green line was kind of on top together with that orange line. So it was a valid uh, long to take. Then we see that we lost that region of support over there at 66K. I told you that moment, if we would break that region, we would fall back to this line here at 64,000 US dollar. We exactly fell down. It it's not like some magic that I have. It's just if you look to the left, that line was hit a lot of times over there. It was hit over there. It was hit over there a lot of times. You know, support or resistance every time that same line. And that is why that wick went all the way to this place. We are slowly crawling up. This was a large wick to the bottom, a body on the top. So yes, we are trying to recover from that huge dip to 64K. I believe that was the end. A lot of people think we could still even fall to 62,000 US dollar, which is possible, but at the moment it looks kind of bullish to me, but I prefer guys to zoom out. We have the RSI here that's bottoming out, you know, so it's like not really bearish bearish anymore. It's not going to fall, in my opinion, to this red line at 200 daily moving average. But I prefer to zoom out guys. So let's quickly show you some charts that will help you with zooming out in this industry. Now that first chart will be over here, this one. I found this chart on Twitter and this chart is showing you, ah, is there going to be an all season or not? Because a lot of people are like, ah, when is this owl season starting? Look, that owl season starts every time when that blue goes down below that red line in this chart. So this is the market cap Bitcoin dominance on a three weekly chart. You can see it over there. Now, if that blue line goes down below uh, that red line, that is the owl season in 2017. Here again, the blue line crossing the red line out season 2020 guys the blue line crossing that red line the blue line is about to cross that red line. it's not crossing yet it's still equal to that orange line like you can see over here that can take a very long time to go equal but when that blue line will cross that uh, orange line that will be the moment that we see an alt season and we are indeed finding resistance at that ema 100 line over here if we're talking about the three weekly chart just like we had over there in 2020 so yes this could be a moment for you to just buy some more of those altcoins. Don't sell them. Don't have weekends. If you believe in these altcoin projects, then do dollar cost average into them at these moments because these were the cheap prices that you were waiting for. So yes, don't give up, in my opinion, on all of the altcoins that you really believe in. If we look at this chart, guys, we can see uh, the Bitcoin versus dollar, of course. Uh, we can see that this fractal that played out over here, like double top, sideways and then we went massively up if we copy the move from here till there and paste it on here that would mean we will see a price going to between 110 and 120 thousand us dollar so from here copying this move would lead to a price of 120 thousand us dollar so it's really interesting to see that if we just do the move that we already did this year and we do that move again 
we would already be at 120,000 US dollars per Bitcoin. Cool chart. If we look at this one, we can see that uh, we are just getting started, guys. This is the beginning of the bull market of 2017. In that beginning, the RSI was already really high. Can you see even green high, like above levels of 80 high. And that is when the beginning of the bull market was. All the way till the end, huge RSI above 80. Here again, 2020 bull market, the RSI was above 80 during that peak. Now we are here. We are below 80. We are even dropping in the RSI. This is just the beginning. This is nothing to do with the bull market top that will be there in 2025. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning that we saw over there. Look, this is where we are now. Somewhere in this area where we didn't even go to 80. That is where we are. We didn't even go to 80 yet. And when we broke that first time the line 80, that is when the real bull market went on. Here, we still need to go in this area for the bull market to really be on. Cool chart. Now, um, this chart, the parabolic SAR, um, is one of the most simplified charts to understand that we are just getting started. Again, guys, look over here. The blue line crossing, that orange line, that is, of course, bull market territory. That is when we have these huge runs. Here again, the blue line crossing that orange line, that is of course the bull market territory, that's when we have these huge runs. Until that blue line crosses that orange line again here, and then we get into the bear market. Here as well, we got into the bear market. Now, these two lines have crossed. We now had three of these green bars over there. There's three dots of bull market. We are just getting started. If you look to this previous bull market, we had three dots over there. We still were following up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles on the chart. Two monthly candles. Every candle is two months. Here is the same. In total, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine green bars. We are just at the third one. We still have like six green bars of bullishness to go. This is just the beginning. These two lines are still very close to each other. Look, at the bull market top, there will be a huge distance between them. At the bull market top, there will be a huge distance between them. We are just getting started. So for me, to be freaking out now is the most stupid thing you can do. You should be accumulating as much as possible Bitcoins at these levels of 64 or 65K. Because there will be a moment we will leave this area somewhere after the summer into the 80K, 90K, 100K, 120K area and you will be regretting not having bought Bitcoin at 64K because you were doubting it could drop to 62K or to 60K. You really think that buying Bitcoin 2K cheaper will matter to you when Bitcoin is at 120,000 US dollars per Bitcoin? Do you really care about that? price of Bitcoin that you bought now while Bitcoin is 64,000 US dollars? Do you care that you bought Bitcoin at 17,000 or 18,000 US dollars? Or do you care that you bought Bitcoin at 3,000 or 6,000 US dollars? Do you really care that you bought Bitcoin at 3 or 6,000 US dollars now that Bitcoin is 60,000 US dollars? You don't give a fuck. You made a shit out of profit because you bought Bitcoin below 10,000 US dollars. Here, you will make a shit of the profit because you bought Bitcoin below 20,000 US dollar. And you will make even a shit of the profit if you buy Bitcoin below 70,000 US dollar. In the far future, you won't care about 68K, 70K, 64K, 62K. It won't matter because the profits will be so high, you will be forgetting about the price that you bought that Bitcoin at. Please understand this. Zoom out. Buying Bitcoin at these prices in this part of the cycle, where a huge part of bull run still needs to happen, is always okay. The crypto tip for today, guys. Now, I've been in this industry since 2013, so that's now already 11 years. One thing I learned from those 11 years is that Bitcoin is king. Bitcoin is the safest asset out there. Ethereum, second safest with all the other layer ones as well. But all the other stuff in this industry, NFTs, meme coins, ordinals, ICOs, IDOs, all of that is high risk assets. Bitcoin is safe. Bitcoin is king. Bitcoin is integrated in the retail finance like you and me, but also in the institutional finance. 
on stock exchanges, spot ETFs, governments holding it, becoming a legal tender in more and more countries. Bitcoin is king. That's why I always say Bitcoin is king. That should be your main focus. That plus maybe Ethereum and some other layer ones like Chainlink or Polkadot or Solana, whatever, you're, whatever you prefer. But Bitcoin should be the king in your portfolio. And all that other stuff is nice to play with. Yes, I also buy meme coins. Yes, I also buy NFTs. I buy all of those altcoins to multiply my capital to be able to buy more Bitcoins back. Because Bitcoin is the safe play. Bitcoin is the one creating new all-time highs every four-year cycle and higher lows. If you take a look at, for example, one of those coins that I would really not trust, Ripple, we have been talking about that one a lot of times, that didn't even make an all-time high in 2021. It didn't go higher in 2021 than it was in 2017. That is not a coin I would be investing in. That doesn't show me a beautiful track record of making all-time highs every bull market, every four-year cycle. And there is multiples of the tokens that I would not invest in for the long term. I would always stay true to Bitcoin, Ethereum and some other layer one tokens. That is the biggest part of my portfolio. And then I allocate like 10 to 15, maybe even 20 percent to these meme coins, to these NFTs, to IDOs, to ICOs. Yes, of course I do that as well, but not more than 20 percent of my total capital, because I know it's a high risk play where I have the risk to lose that capital fully. A lot of these projects will fail. The projects that already survived two bull markets and two bear markets, these are the projects that probably will stay. So please understand the crypto tip for today. When it comes to investing and protecting your capital against inflation, Bitcoin is the king. And in the second place, you will get Ethereum, Chainlink, Polkadot, Solana, and a couple of more of these layer ones that have gone through a couple of bull markets and have been proven to be also a pretty safe play, but not as safe as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only king in this industry. Then the question of one of the followers, guys, the question was, Didi, how much would we need as a family of four to retire in Thailand? Now, that question is a very difficult one for me to answer because it all depends on what kind of lifestyle you're gonna live. To be clear, the first year of traveling, of which we spent most of the time in Thailand, where we traveled as backpackers, we just had a few backpacks, we slept in very crappy, cheap backpack accommodations, we spent around 35,000 US dollar per year. Nowadays, we live in Thailand in big villas and a little bit more luxury because we can afford it, but it's a little bit more expensive than at 35,000 US dollar per year. So nowadays, it's maybe even the double, like 60,000 US dollar per year. Now, maybe even a little bit more if we do some crazy stuff like renting a huge yacht and all of that stuff. So in Thailand, every style of life is possible. You can really live a very minimalistic style that is really cheap and affordable, but you can also live like the king, like it's really expensive. You can rent huge, kick-ass, beautiful villas I have never seen in Spain, for example. Thailand is a little bit further with that building and constructions. They are a little bit more modern. They're building really beautiful stuff over there. So you can rent houses for 50,000 US dollar per month, but you can also rent houses for $500 per month. So it all depends on what kind of family you are. If you are prepared to just live a very normal life in a normal Thai house without having a huge pool and without having a huge garden and without having all the, like, the people working for you and all that stuff, you can still rent houses for 500 to 1,000 US dollar per month. And you can live a very beautiful life there. Food is really cheap. If we, as a family of five, eat out in a restaurant, in a Thai restaurant, we will be paying between 500 and 1,000 baht, depending on which Thai restaurant we are with the five of us. That's like $25 for five people of eating. If you prepare your food at home, it, of course, is cheaper. So it all depends on how you live. Sometimes it's even cheaper to rent a cook, like full-time, because they cost like $500 a month and they will be cooking all your dinners, all your breakfast, all your lunch. So yeah, that saves you all the money that you normally spend in restaurants. So there's a mix of possibilities in Thailand, but it also makes it a mix of possibilities when it comes to how much would you need to retire in Thailand. But I think if you're a normal family that just lives a normal life, like with four people, 
you should be able to live a beautiful life with like between like 30,000 and 50,000 US dollar per year. You should be able to live a very, very beautiful, comfortable life just in a normal house, not a house with a gardener and a pool boy and all that, just a normal house. A 10 minute drive to the beach, like a normal house, a yearly rent. You still should be able to live in Thailand with around like $30,000 to $40,000 a year. Should be easily possible if you just live a normal, beautiful life, guys. And that's not like living very minimalistic. And yes, I agree, it's not like really, really minimalistic. And you can even do it cheaper, but like that's a normal life. So if you would need to survive the next two bull markets, which will mean these 12 months, then of course another four year cycle. So let's say that's five years before we reach higher highs, before we reach prices of Bitcoin near $1 million per Bitcoin. So that will take another five years minimum, one year this bull market, one year the bear market, one year sideways, two years up. So yes, it will take five years in total for that next bull market top. Then you need enough Bitcoins to survive those five years and to keep a few Bitcoins left over there because that will make you then a millionaire. If you have two Bitcoins left in 2029, for example, that would mean you had maybe 1.5 million at that time. If you calculate with 40,000 US dollar, let's make it 50,000 US dollar a year to live in Thailand, you would need five years times 50,000 US dollars. You would need 250,000 US dollars to be retiring in those five years. Five years of 50,000 dollar each is 250,000 US dollar, which at the moment is like 3.3. Bitcoin or something. So that is what you need to just live those five years without working. And then you need to have a few Bitcoins left, like two or three, for example, to be able to make from those three Bitcoins, like one million, maybe even two million US dollar to be able to survive, to be able to survive some more years without working. If I need to be very honest, it will take you at least at the moment, like five to six Bitcoins to be able to really retire in Thailand. And then you really need to live a just normal life and focus on multiplying those Bitcoins by using staking, by having bots running for you, like the bot we have, 3% a month, for example. Then you can live off the stake rewards of those bots. So there's multiple ways to do these calculations. But if you really want to retire, not do anything anymore, then yeah, I think living in Thailand will still cost you 30 to 50,000 US dollar per year for a family four to live a normal, beautiful life. If you have the capital already now, you can also use that capital to multiply that capital with these bots that I was just talking about. For example, our bot makes, makes around 3% a month. So if you have, for example, 500K eh, and you put that in a bot and it makes you 3% a month, yeah, that's a beautiful amount of money that you can live off those months, 15,000 US dollar. A normal family should be really able to live off that money in, in Thailand. <laughs> you can live off way less, believe me. But if you would have like 10 to 15,000 US dollar because of staking rewards or bots running for you every and each month without your capital going down, then of course it's a different calculation. Then you will be able to retire just because of your staking rewards and your investment rewards. And then the whole capital keeps growing because the next bull cycle, Bitcoin will go to a couple of hundred thousand US dollar, maybe even to a million if you look in the next 10 years in total. So for me, there is multiple possibilities to be able to retire in Thailand and it's way cheaper than most of the countries ever visited. Plus the life quality, the quality of life that you return back for the money that you're spending in Thailand, that's huge. That's huge. There is no place in the world where you can still be massaged for nine euros, eight euros, even six euros for one hour, for example. There is no place in the world where you can eat really healthy, good food for like two dollars a meal. It's all there in Thailand. So for me, yes, Bitcoin is king when it comes to asset, but Thailand is the kingdom when it comes to a beautiful life to retire and just enjoy that capital that you created because of Bitcoin. And today the inspirational quote is one from Bob Marley, guys. Yes, don't gain the world and lose your soul. Wisdom is better than any silver or gold or even Bitcoin. It is all about living life to the fullest in a very honest way, maybe even a honest, humble way. Love the life that you're living, live the life that you love. Don't gain the world, don't go for all that materialistic stuff, that's wealth, that's gold, that's silver, while you lose your soul. Your soul is way more important than any of those assets, silver, gold, or Bitcoin, guys. So whatever you do in life, yes, of course, it's not bad to become wealthy, but please never give up your soul, never give up your norms, never give up your values. 
If you can become wealthy by, for example, now creating this new flu that you will enforce on the people and become wealthy of that, billionaire because of that, I would never do that. I would not want to lose my soul, my norms and values on that money that I could be able to make over there. There is a shit of the people that are making money like that or that did make money like that, for example, in the last couple of years, but I would never do that. And that's what that quote is saying. Don't gain the world while losing your soul. That soul is the most important part of you. The most important of you being you. The most important part of you being able to survive without any of those assets. Without gold, without silver, without dollars, without euros, without Bitcoin. Let's say you need to start all over again tomorrow with zero. Just like you came from school with zero. The only thing that you started with was a little bit of wisdom. And some people gained that wisdom from schools, some people gained that wisdom from homeschooling, some people gained that wisdom from nature if they lived somewhere in the jungle, for example. There is multiple types of wisdom. But that wisdom that is there inside of you, nobody can take that from you. Everyone can take your gold, everyone can take your silver, everyone can take your bitcoins, everyone can take your gold rings, everyone can take everything that is materialistic from you, but they can never take your wisdom. At least not yet. Maybe in the far future, aliens won't come and they will do something with your head and you're gone. Yeah, like you're Blanco again, like a little baby, but normal people will not be able to take your wisdom. They will not be able to take your soul. And when you keep your soul pure and you, when you will stick to your norms and values, there will always be people there that will be willing to help you because you will always true to yourself. You will always harness to those people. Even if you go bankrupt, you will be able to build it up again because you were never a traitor, because you were never fooling people, you were never scamming people, you were never doing anything negative to all those other people around you. That is how you protect your soul. That is how you not focus only on gaining the world, but also gaining on wisdom and your beautiful community around you. Because because of those people, you will be able to survive in that far future when the shit hits the fan and when we lose control on all the assets all over the world, guys. So I think it's a very important quote. Don't gain the world while losing your soul. Wisdom will always be better than silver, gold, or even Bitcoin, guys. That was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video again. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Please go to a store and buy these cool shirts like Run BTC. Uh, I wish you an amazing Thursday, a beautiful day again, and hopefully see you tomorrow again at another video. Thanks for watching.